Runes are the letters in a set of related alphabets known as runic alphabets, which were used to write various Germanic languages before the adoption of the Latin alphabet and for specialized purposes thereafter. The Scandinavian variants are also known as Futhark or Fuark derived from their first six letters of the alphabet, F, U, A, R, and K. The Anglo-Saxon variant is Futhork or Fuark due to sound changes undergone in Old English by the names of those six letters. Runology is the study of the runic alphabets, runic inscriptions, runestones, and their history. Runology forms a specialized branch of Germanic linguistics. The earliest runic inscriptions date from around 150 AD. The characters were generally replaced by the Latin alphabet as the cultures that had used runes underwent Christianization, by approximately 700 AD in Central Europe and 1100 AD in Northern Europe. However, the use of runes persisted for specialized purposes in Northern Europe. Until the early 20th century, runes were used in rural Sweden for decorative purposes in Dalarna and on runic calendars. The three best known runic alphabets are the Elder Futhark around 150-800 AD, the Anglo-Saxon Futhark 400-1100 AD, and the Younger Futhark 800-1100 AD. The Younger Futhark is divided further into the Long Branch runes also called Danish, although they were also used in Norway, Sweden and Frisia, Short Branch or Rock runes also called Swedish Norwegian, although they were also used in Denmark, and the Stavlosa or Halsinge runes, staveless runes The Younger Futhark developed further into the Medieval runes 1100-1500 AD, and the Dalekarlian runes c. 1500-1800 AD. Historically, the runic alphabet is a derivation of the old Italic scripts of antiquity, with the addition of some innovations. Which variant of the old Italic family in particular gave rise to the runes is uncertain. Suggestions include Raic, Venetic, Etruscan, or Old Latin as candidates. At the time, all of these scripts had the same angular letter shapes suited for epigraphy, which would become characteristic of the runes. The process of transmission of the script is unknown. The oldest inscriptions are found in Denmark and northern Germany. A West Germanic hypothesis suggests transmission via Elbe Germanic groups, while a Gothic hypothesis presumes transmission via East Germanic expansion. Topic: <laughs> History and use. The runes were in use among the Germanic peoples from the 1st or 2nd century AD. This period corresponds to the late Common Germanic stage linguistically, with a continuum of dialects not yet clearly separated into the three branches of later centuries North Germanic, West Germanic, and East Germanic. No distinction is made in surviving runic inscriptions between long and short vowels, although such a distinction was certainly present phonologically in the spoken languages of the time. Similarly, there are no signs for labiovelars in the Elder Futhark such signs were introduced in both the Anglo-Saxon Futhark and the Gothic alphabet as variants of P, C Pior. The term runes is used to distinguish these symbols from Latin and Greek letters. It is attested on a 6th century Alemannic runestaff as runa and possibly as runo on the 4th century Einang stone. The name comes from the Germanic root run Gothic, runa, meaning secret or whisper. In Old Irish Gaelic, the word run means mystery, secret, intention, or affectionate love. Similarly in Welsh and Old English, the word rin and run respectively means mystery, secret, secret writing, or sometimes in the extreme sense of the word miracle. Gwerth. Oam is a Celtic script, similarly carved in the Norse manner. The root run can also be found in the Baltic languages, meaning speech. In Lithuanian, runati means both to cut with a knife and to speak. According to another theory, the Germanic root comes from the Indo-European root asterisk ru, dig. The Finnish term for rune, rimakryen, means scratched letter. The Finnish word runo means poem and comes from the same source as the English word rune. It is a very old loan of the Proto-Germanic asterisk runo. Letter, literature, secret. Topic <inaudible> Origins. The runes developed centuries after the old Italic alphabets, from which they are probably historically derived. 
The debate on the development of the runic script concerns the question regarding which of the Italic alphabets should be taken as their point of origin and which, if any, signs should be considered original innovations added to the letters found in the Italic scripts. The historical context of the script's origin is the cultural contact between Germanic people, who often served as mercenaries in the Roman army, and the Italian peninsula during the Roman Imperial period 1st century BC to 5th century AD. The formation of the Elder Futhark was complete by the early 5th century, with the Kylver stone being the first evidence of the Futhark ordering as well as of the Pirun. Specifically, the Raic alphabet of Balzano is often advanced as a candidate for the origin of the runes, with only five elder Futhark runes, e, i, j, p, having no counterpart in the Balzano alphabet. Scandinavian scholars tend to favor derivation from the Latin alphabet itself over Raic candidates. A. North Etruscan thesis is supported by the inscription on the Negau helmet dating to the 2nd century BC. This is in a northern Etruscan alphabet but features a Germanic name, Haragast. Giuliano and Larissa Bonfante suggest that runes derived from some North Italic alphabet, specifically Venetic, but since Romans conquered Venetia after 200 BC, and then the Latin alphabet became prominent and Venetic culture diminished in importance, Germanic people could have adopted the Venetic alphabet within 3rd century BC or even earlier. The angular shapes of the runes are shared with most contemporary alphabets of the period that were used for carving in wood or stone. There are no horizontal strokes, when carving a message on a flat staff or stick, it would be along the grain, thus both less legible and more likely to split the wood. This characteristic is also shared by other alphabets, such as the early form of the Latin alphabet used for the Duino's inscription, but it is not universal, especially among early runic inscriptions, which frequently have variant rune shapes, including horizontal strokes. Runic manuscripts that is written rather than carved runes, such as Codex Runicus also show horizontal strokes. The West Germanic hypothesis speculates on an introduction by West Germanic tribes. This hypothesis is based on claiming that the earliest inscriptions of the 2nd and 3rd centuries, found in bogs and graves around Jutland the Vimos inscriptions, exhibit word endings that, being interpreted by Scandinavian scholars to be Proto-Norse, are considered unresolved and long having been the subject of discussion. Inscriptions such as Wagnia, Nijo, and Harija are supposed to represent tribe names, tentatively proposed to be Vangiones, the Nidensis, and the Hari tribes located in the Rhineland. Since names ending in I-O reflect Germanic morphology representing the Latin ending I-U-S, and the suffix Ineus was reflected by Germanic Ineo, the question of the problematic ending I-J-O in masculine Proto-Norse would be resolved by assuming Roman Rhineland influences, while the awkward ending of Legewa may be solved by accepting the fact that the name may indeed be West Germanic. In the early runic period differences between Germanic languages are generally presumed to be small. Another theory presumes a Northwest Germanic unity preceding the emergence of Proto-Norse proper from roughly the 5th century. An alternative suggestion explaining the impossibility of classifying the earliest inscriptions as either North or West Germanic is forwarded by E. A. Mikhaev, who presumes a special runic coin, an early literary Germanic employed by the entire late common Germanic linguistic community after the separation of Gothic 2nd to 5th centuries, while the spoken dialects may already have been more diverse. <laughs> Early inscriptions Runic inscriptions from the 400-year period 150–550 AD are described as period I. These inscriptions are generally in Elder Futhark, but the set of letter shapes and bindrunes employed is far from standardized. Notably the J, S, and runes undergo considerable modifications, while others, such as P and I, remain unattested altogether prior to the first full Futhark row on the Kylver stone c. 400 AD. Artifacts such as spear heads or shield mounts have been found that bear runic marking that may be dated to 200 AD, as evidenced by artifacts found across northern Europe in Schleswig North Germany, Fyn, Schelland, Gilland Denmark, and Skane Sweden. Earlier—but less reliable— Artifacts have been found in Meldorf, Suderdith Martian, northern Germany. These include brooches and combs found in graves, most notably the Meldorf fibula, and are supposed to have the earliest markings resembling runic inscriptions. 
Theories of the existence of separate Gothic runes have been advanced, even identifying them as the original alphabet from which the Futhark were derived, but these have little support in archaeological findings mainly the spearhead of Koval, with its right-to-left inscription, its T-shaped tawaz, and its rectangular dagaz. If there ever were genuinely Gothic runes, they were soon replaced by the Gothic alphabet. The letters of the Gothic alphabet, however, as given by the Alcuin manuscript 9th century, are obviously related to the names of the Futhark. The names are clearly Gothic, but it is impossible to say whether they are as old as the letters themselves. A handful of elder Futhark inscriptions were found in Gothic territory, such as the 3rd to 5th century ring of Petrosa. The Encyclopædia Britannica even suggests the original development of the runes may have been due to the Goths. Topic. Magical or divinatory use The stanza 157 of Havamal attribute to runes the power to bring that which is dead back to life. In this stanza, Odin recounts a spell. The earliest runic inscriptions found on artifacts give the name of either the craftsman or the proprietor, or sometimes, remain a linguistic mystery. Due to this, it is possible that the early runes were not used so much as a simple writing system, but rather as magical signs to be used for charms. Although some say the runes were used for divination, there is no direct evidence to suggest they were ever used in this way. The name rune itself, taken to mean, secret, something hidden, seems to indicate that knowledge of the runes was originally considered esoteric, or restricted to an elite. The 6th century Bjorkatorp runestone warns in Proto Norse using the word rune in both senses Hides runo runu, falahok hydera, jinarunas. Eregeu haramalaush uti as. Waladad, saws at baruts. Uarba spa. I, master of the runes, conceal here runes of power. Incessantly plagued by maleficence, doomed to insidious death is he who breaks this monument. I prophesied destruction, prophecy of destruction. The same curse and use of the word, rune, is also found on the Stentofen runestone. There also are some inscriptions suggesting a medieval belief in the magical significance of runes, such as the Frank's Casket AD 700 panel. Charm words, such as auja, lao, lauka, and most commonly, alu, appear on a number of migration period elder Futhark inscriptions as well as variants and abbreviations of them. Much speculation and study has been produced on the potential meaning of these inscriptions. Rhyming groups appear on some early bracteats that also may be magical in purpose, such as Salusalu and Luatuwa. Further, an inscription on the Gumarp runestone 500-700 AD gives a cryptic inscription describing the use of three runic letters followed by the elder Futhark F rune written three times in succession. Nevertheless, it has proven difficult to find unambiguous traces of runic oracles. Although Norse literature is full of references to runes, it nowhere contains specific instructions on divination. There are at least three sources on divination with rather vague descriptions that may, or may not, refer to runes. To Cytus's 1st century Germania, Snorri Sturluson's 13th century Inglinga saga, and Rimbert's 9th century Vita Ansgari. The first source, to Cytus's Germania, describes signs chosen in groups of three and cut from a nut bearing tree. Although the runes do not seem to have been in use at the time of Tacitus's writings. A second source is the Inglinga saga, where Granmar, the king of Södermanland, goes to Uppsala for the blot. There, the chips fell in a way that said that he would not live long. Feel honum a svo span sem han mundi eigi langi lifa. These chips, however, are easily explainable as a blot span sacrificial chip, which was marked, possibly with sacrificial blood, shaken, and thrown down like dice, and their positive or negative significance then decided." The third source is Rimbert's Vita Ansgari, where there are three accounts of what some believe to be the use of runes for divination, but Rimbert calls it, "...drawing lots." One of these accounts is the description of how a renegade Swedish king, Anand Uppsala, first brings a Danish fleet to Burka, but then changes his mind and asks the Danes to, "...draw lots." According to the story, this drawing of lots was quite informative, telling them that attacking Burka would bring bad luck and that they should attack a Slavic town instead. The tool in the drawing of lots, however, is easily explainable as a halot line, lot twig, which according to Foote and Wilson would be used in the same manner as a blotspan. 
The lack of extensive knowledge on historical use of the runes has not stopped modern authors from extrapolating entire systems of divination from what few specifics exist, usually loosely based on the reconstructed names of the runes and additional outside influence. A recent study of runic magic suggests that runes were used to create magical objects such as amulets, but not in a way that would indicate that runic writing was any more inherently magical, than were other writing systems such as Latin or Greek. Medieval use As Proto-Germanic evolved into its later language groups, the words assigned to the runes and the sounds represented by the runes themselves began to diverge somewhat and each culture would create new runes, rename or rearrange its rune names slightly, or stop using obsolete runes completely, to accommodate these changes. Thus, the Anglo-Saxon Futhork has several runes peculiar to itself to represent diphthongs unique to or at least prevalent in the Anglo-Saxon dialect. Nevertheless, that the younger Futhark has 16 runes, while the elder Futhark has 24, is not fully explained by the 600-some years of sound changes that had occurred in the North Germanic language group. The development here might seem rather astonishing, since the younger form of the alphabet came to use fewer different rune signs at the same time as the development of the language led to a greater number of different phonemes than had been present at the time of the older Futhark. For example, voiced and unvoiced consonants merged in script, and so did many vowels, while the number of vowels in the spoken language increased. From c. 1100 AD, this disadvantage was eliminated in the medieval runes, which again increased the number of different signs to correspond with the number of phonemes in the language. Some later runic finds are on monuments rune stones, which often contain solemn inscriptions about people who died or performed great deeds. For a long time it was presumed that this kind of grand inscription was the primary use of runes, and that their use was associated with a certain societal class of rune carvers. In the mid-1950s, however, approximately 670 inscriptions, known as the Brigan inscriptions, were found in Bergen. These inscriptions were made on wood and bone, often in the shape of sticks of various sizes, and contained inscriptions of an everyday nature ranging from name tags, prayers often in Latin, personal messages, business letters, and expressions of affection, to body phrases of a profane and sometimes even of a vulgar nature. Following this find, it is nowadays commonly presumed that, at least in late use, runic was a widespread and common writing system. In the later Middle Ages, runes also were used in the clog almanacs sometimes called runic staff, prim, or Scandinavian calendar of Sweden and Estonia. The authenticity of some monuments bearing runic inscriptions found in Northern America is disputed, most of them have been dated to modern times. <laughs> <laughs> runes in Eddic lore In Norse mythology, the runic alphabet is attested to a divine origin Old Norse, Reginkanar. This is attested as early as on the Nolabi runestone from c. 600 AD that reads Runo Fahi Raganakundo Toj a. Meaning, I prepare the suitable divine rune. And in an attestation from the 9th century on the Sparlosa runestone, which reads OK Ra Runa A Regi N Kundu, meaning, and interpret the runes of divine origin. In the poetic Edda poem Havamal, stanza 80, the runes also are described as Regenkanar. The poem Havamal explains that the originator of the runes was the major deity, Odin. Stanza 138 describes how Odin received the runes through self-sacrifice. In stanza 139, Odin continues, this passage has been interpreted as a mythical representation of shamanic initial rituals in which the initiate must undergo a physical trial in order to receive mystic wisdom. In the poetic Edda poem Rigsula, another origin is related of how the runic alphabet became known to humans. The poem relates how Rig, identified as Heimdall in the introduction, sired three sons Thrall, slave, Churl, freeman, and Jarl noble, by human women. These sons became the ancestors of the three classes of humans indicated by their names. When Jarl reached an age when he began to handle weapons and show other signs of nobility, Rig returned and, having claimed him as a son, taught him the runes. In 1555, the exiled Swedish Archbishop Olus Magnus recorded a tradition that a man named Ketel Runsky had stolen three rune staffs from Odin and learned the runes and their magic. <laughs> 
Topic: <laughs> Runic alphabets. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Elder Futhark, 2nd to 8th centuries. The Elder Futhark, used for writing Proto-Norse, consists of 24 runes that often are arranged in three groups of eight, each group is referred to as an eight. The earliest known sequential listing of the full set of 24 runes dates to approximately AD 400 and is found on the Kylver Stone in Gotland, Sweden. Most probably each rune had a name, chosen to represent the sound of the rune itself. The names are, however, not directly attested for the Elder Futhark themselves. Reconstructed names in Proto-Germanic have been produced, based on the names given for the runes in the later alphabets attested in the rune poems and the linked names of the letters of the Gothic alphabet. The letter, a, was named from the runic letter called ansis. An asterisk before the rune names means that they are unattested reconstructions. The 24 elder Futhark runes are. <laughs> Anglo-Saxon runes 5th to 11th centuries. The Futhork sometimes written Fuork", are an extended alphabet, consisting of 29, and later even 33, characters. It was probably used from the 5th century onwards. There are competing theories as to the origins of the Anglo-Saxon Futhork. One theory proposes that it was developed in Frisia and later spread to England, while another holds that Scandinavians introduced runes to England, where the Futhork was modified and exported to Frisia. Some examples of Futhork inscriptions are found on the Thames Scramasax, in the Vienna Codex, in Cotton Otho BX Anglo-Saxon Rune Poem and on the Ruthwell Cross. The Anglo-Saxon Rune Poem gives the following characters and names, Fia, Er, Thorn, Os, Rad, Cen, Gifu, Win, Haegl, Nyd, As, Ger, Eoh, Pior, Eolh, Siegel, Tir, Bjork, A, Man, Lagu, Ing, Ethel, Daeg, Ac, Aesc, Ear, Ior, Ear. Extra runes attested to outside of the rune poem include, Quarth, Calc, Gar, and Stan. Some of these additional letters have only been found in manuscripts. Fia, Orn, and Siegel stood for F and S in most environments, but voiced to V and Z between vowels or voiced consonants. Gifu and Win stood for the letters Yog and Win, which became G and W in Middle English. Topic: <laughs> Marcomannic runes, eighth to 9th centuries. A runic alphabet consisting of a mixture of Elder Futhark with Anglo-Saxon Futhark is recorded in a treatise called De Inventione Literarum, ascribed to H. R. A. Banis Morris and preserved in 8th and 9th century manuscripts mainly from the southern part of the Carolingian Empire Alemannia, Bavaria. The manuscript text attributes the runes to the Marcomanni, quas nos Nordmanos vocamus, and hence traditionally, the alphabet is called Marcomannic runes but it has no connection with the Marcomanni, and rather is an attempt of Carolingian scholars to represent all letters of the Latin alphabets with runic equivalents. Wilhelm Grimm discussed these runes in 1821. <laughs> Younger Futhark 9th to 11th centuries. The Younger Futhark, also called Scandinavian Futhark, is a reduced form of the Elder Futhark, consisting of only 16 characters. The reduction correlates with phonetic changes when Proto-Norse evolved into Old Norse. They are found in Scandinavia and Viking Age settlements abroad, probably in use from the 9th century onward. They are divided into long branch Danish and short twig Swedish and Norwegian runes. The difference between the two versions is a matter of controversy. A general opinion is that the difference between them was functional viz. the long branch runes were used for documentation on stone, whereas the short twig runes were in everyday use for private or official messages on wood. <inaudible> medieval runes 12th to 15th centuries. In the Middle Ages, the younger Futhark in Scandinavia was expanded, so that it once more contained one sign for each phoneme of the Old Norse language. 
Dotted variants of voiceless signs were introduced to denote the corresponding voiced consonants, or vice versa, voiceless variants of voiced consonants, and several new runes also appeared for vowel sounds. Inscriptions in medieval Scandinavian runes show a large number of variant rune forms, and some letters, such as S, C, and Z, often were used interchangeably. Medieval runes were in use until the 15th century. Of the total number of Norwegian runic inscriptions preserved today, most are medieval runes. Notably, more than 600 inscriptions using these runes have been discovered in Bergen since the 1950s, mostly on wooden sticks, the so-called Brygen inscriptions. This indicates that runes were in common use side by side with the Latin alphabet for several centuries. Indeed, some of the medieval runic inscriptions are written in Latin. Topic: <laughs> Dalecarlian runes, 16th to 19th centuries. According to Carl Gustav Werner, in the isolated province of Dalarna in Sweden a mix of runes and Latin letters developed. The Dalekarlian runes came into use in the early 16th century and remained in some use up to the 20th century. Some discussion remains on whether their use was an unbroken tradition throughout this period or whether people in the 19th and 20th centuries learned runes from books written on the subject. The character inventory was used mainly for transcribing Elfdalian. Academic study The modern study of runes was initiated during the Renaissance, by Johannes Boreas Boreas viewed runes as holy or magical in a Kabbalistic sense. The study of runes was continued by Olaf Rudbeck Sr. and presented in his collection Atlantica. Anders Celsius (1701–1744) further extended the science of runes and traveled around the whole of Sweden to examine the runestenar runestones. From the Golden Age of Philology in the 19th century, runology formed a specialized branch of Germanic linguistics. Topic: <laughs> Body of inscriptions. The largest group of surviving runic inscription are Viking Age younger Futhark runestones, commonly found in Denmark and Sweden. Another large group are medieval runes, most commonly found on small objects, often wooden sticks. The largest concentration of runic inscriptions are the Brygen inscriptions found in Bergen, more than 650 in total. Elder Futhark inscriptions number around 350, about 260 of which are from Scandinavia, of which about half are on Bracteates. Anglo-Saxon Futhark inscriptions number around 100 items. <laughs> Modern use Runic alphabets have seen numerous uses since the 18th century Viking revival, in Scandinavian Romantic nationalism and Germanic occultism in the 19th century, and in the context of the fantasy genre and of Germanic neopaganism in the 20th century. <laughs> Esotericism Germanic mysticism and Nazi symbolism The pioneer of the Arminist branch of Ariosophy and one of the more important figures in esotericism in Germany and Austria in the late 19th and early 20th century was the Austrian occultist, mysticist, and Völkisch author, Guido von Liszt. In 1908, he published in Das Geheimnis der Runen, The Secret of the Runes, a set of 18 so called Arminen runes. Based on the younger Futhark and runes of List's own introduction, which allegedly were revealed to him in a state of temporary blindness after cataract operations on both eyes in 1902. The use of runes in Germanic mysticism, notably List's Arminen runes and the derived Willigut runes by Karl Maria Willigut, played a certain role in Nazi symbolism. The fascination with runic symbolism was mostly limited to Heinrich Himmler, and not shared by the other members of the Nazi top echelon. Consequently, runes appear mostly in insignia associated with the Schutzstaffel, the paramilitary organization led by Himmler. 
Willigut is credited with designing the SS Aranring, which displays a number of Willigut runes. <laughs> Modern neopaganism and esotericism Runes are popular in Germanic neopaganism, and to a lesser extent in other forms of neopaganism and New Age esotericism. Various systems of runic divination have been published since the 1980s, notably by Ralph Bloom Stephen Flowers Onward, Stefan Grundy and Nigel Pennock The Uthark theory originally was proposed as a scholarly hypothesis by Sigurd Agrell in 1932. In 2002, Swedish esotericist Thomas Carlson popularized this Uthark runic row, which he refers to as the night side of the runes in the context of modern occultism. <laughs> J.R.R. Tolkien and contemporary fiction In J. R. R. Tolkien's novel The Hobbit 1937, the Anglo-Saxon runes are used on a map to emphasize its connection to the dwarves. They also were used in the initial drafts of The Lord of the Rings, but later were replaced by the Sirth rune-like alphabet invented by Tolkien, used to write the language of the dwarves, Khuzjil. Following Tolkien, historical and fictional runes appear commonly in modern popular culture, particularly in fantasy literature, but also in other forms of media such as video games for example the 1992 video game Heimdall used it as magical symbols associated with unnatural forces. Unicode Runic alphabets were added to the Unicode standard in September, 1999 with the release of version 3.0. The Unicode block for runic alphabets is U plus 16 AO U plus 16 FF. It is intended to encode the letters of the Elder Futhark, the Anglo-Frisian runes, and the Younger Futhark long branch and short twig but not the staveless variants, in cases where cognate letters have the same shape resorting to unification. The block is of Unicode 3.0 contained 81 symbols, 75 runic letters U plus 16 AO U plus 16 EA, 3 punctuation marks runic single punctuation U plus 16 exabytes, runic multiple punctuation U plus 16 EC and runic cross punctuation U plus 16 ED, and 3 runic symbols that are used in early modern runic calendar staves. Golden number runes. Runic Arlog symbol U plus 16 EE, Runic Tevimeter symbol U plus 16 EF, Runic Belgther symbol U plus 16 F0. As of Unicode 7.0, eight characters were added, three attributed to J.R.R. Tolkien's mode of writing modern English in Anglo Saxon runes, and five for the cryptogrammic vowel symbols used in an inscription on the Franks casket. See also Pentamal system of numerals Runic magic Runiform disambiguation for unrelated scripts sometimes described as runes or rune-like. Notes <laughs>